Hello and welcome to my reading vlog of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. I literally forgot what I was saying. Oh my god. Hello and welcome to my reading vlog of Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. If this happens to be the first video of mine that you are watching, welcome to my corner of the internet. I'm Laura Van Taylor. I'm a writer, reader, obviously, and I'm so glad that the algorithm pointed you in my direction. Don't know exactly how that happened, but it did. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first impressions of Fourth Wing is that I'm really enjoying it. I remember hearing a lot of people or a few people on TikTok being like, oh, it kind of reminds me of Throne of Glass. I mean, I don't want to spoil Throne of Glass for people who haven't read it and plan on reading it. So like if you haven't gotten to book three, Air of Fire, don't watch until I give you the thumbs up, okay? So starting now, stop watching or skip ahead till I give you this. Other than the fact that there are dragon-like creatures in the book, and I guess there's a competition, which happens in the first book, so that's not a spoiler, but my point still stands. It's a fantasy, and that's really, for me, where the similarities end. The main character isn't an assassin, she's not a long-lost heir to the throne of another kingdom that we know of yet. I mean, she is the daughter of like a powerful person, just like Aelin is, but unfortunately that's where the similarities end. That's not to say though that if you've read Throne of Glass that you wouldn't like this book. I haven't been this excited, and I may be jumping the gun on this, but I haven't been this excited to pick up a book since I've read Throne of Glass. And I also mean that in the sense of like when I first picked it up to read and then after the fact when I had to close the book to do something else, I was really excited to pick it up again. That's not to say that that hasn't happened since I've read Thunder of Glass for the first time years ago, like six, five or six years ago, but to this degree, not necessarily. It might have happened and I've just forgotten about it, but there is just something about this book that just from like the first page, it just grabs at you, you know what I mean? My first impressions of the characters themselves, Violet is interesting. I've never really read a book with a main character that has that kind of uh, predicament, usually in fantasy, YA, new adult, which this is, and adult alike, usually the main characters don't have these kinds of physical afflictions. Which if you didn't know, Violet is disabled, I guess? I mean, she's sustained um, health related problems uh, as a result of a fever that her mother had when she was pregnant with her, as it was explained. Not a spoiler, it's her being sick is in the description. So with all of that being said, Violet, I don't have too many opinions on her specifically. It's more so just how she views the people around her. You get more detail from those people or about those people than about Violet herself. At this point, the only thing I have learned about her is just that she gets injured really easily. And I don't know if, if it's also that like her immune system isn't good. Uh, regardless though, she is a disabled main character and I've never read anything like that. So I think that's really cool to have that kind of representation. But yeah, other than that, can't really say a whole lot. So who knows if this feeling of like, oh, I can't wait to pick this up will continue. I also wanted to talk about the fact that I did manage to grab a special edition, which as of the time that I am recording this has been sold out everywhere pretty much. If you go on the Indigo website, I think it said that it wouldn't ship for like three to four weeks or something. The funny thing is, is I pre-ordered this months ago before any of the hype for this book really popped off, so to speak. I just read the synopsis, thought it sounded cool, and the book was also absolutely stunning. The only thing I wish that it had was some sort of like design on the front cover. Like maybe they had, like maybe they could have put a dragon on it or like the outline of one, just like they kind of have on the sprayed edges there, which the sprayed edges are obviously my favorite part. But if you do take the dust jacket off, it's pretty much like an all 
black book, which is so cool, other than like the gold foiling on the sides for the spine and whatnot. This has to be one of the most beautiful books I've ever owned in my entire life. And I own like original hard copy first editions of like Six of Crows, which if you don't know that those books are like, they also have sprayed edges. So when you take the dust jacket off of them, Six of Crows is like a full black book and Crooked Kingdom is all red. Got a little bit off track here, but all of this is to say that I'm really enjoying the book so far. Before I start reading again, I just want to show you guys this old uh, divergent bookmark that I found while I was moving. It's the most random thing ever, but I just love that I have this bookmark. Why? <laughs> was super easy to get into. Fantasy is a genre that you find yourself often, more often than not, having a hard time getting into. You pick up a book, it doesn't even have to be that big, but then you go to open it and you're like, man, world building, just not a fun time for me. Or the fact that you have to spend normally a lot of time just getting introduced to everything. This book, so far, and I'm on page 55. I started this yesterday. As someone who has been coming out of a reading slump slowly but surely, the fact that I'm this far in the book and it's only been about a day or so, that's amazing. I haven't been able to get this far in a book this quickly in a really long time. Granted, it hasn't been as long when it comes to like, you know, me reading Throne of Glass like I mentioned earlier. I have, I have thankfully finished books quicker since then. It's just that the enjoyment that I feel combined with the fact that it's not taking me as long to get into has been really helpful so far in continuing to read, if that makes sense. I'm so glad I made this coffee because it's 1.40 a.m. and it's just the ambience is on point, you know? But anyway, I figured I'd give you some information like that if you're thinking about reading this book and you've made it this far in the video, just go read it. I mean, finish this video first if you want. It's really hard not to be spoilery. I'm sort of more or less used to making spoilery vlogs, half of which don't even get posted because I either don't finish them or if I do, I'm too spoilery. And I feel like you reach a wider audience when you make videos that, in this case, reading vlogs that are spoilery because then more people are able to watch it. It is currently 324. On June the 16th, it's a Friday, I have gotten to chapter 9. I originally thought I was on chapter 10, but it's chapter 9. Still though, pretty great for someone like me who's had such a hard time getting to that 100 page mark, especially so quickly. So I feel like that should tell you how easy it is to read this book, how fun it is. Uh, the end of chapter 8 was uh, something. I am a little scared to keep reading, but we're gonna get through it. I will say, Zayden is my dude. I truthfully don't think, like we're not supposed to like him yet, or maybe we are, and I don't know, I'm just like overthinking that too. But man, I love that man. Dane, he's all right. Uh, it's, that part is supposed to be like a, I guess, friends to lovers situation but I personally have the vibes, or I get the vibes that, spoiler alert, that's not supposed to be the case. And then Violet and Zayden are supposed to be enemies to lovers. So I'm like, ooh, this is a love triangle that I was not hoping for, but it's here to stay, I'm assuming, for a while. And who knows who she'll end up with. I think they said the sequel is coming out in November. Who's they? Just, I guess, anyone who's read the book and has made a video that said, I can't wait till November. But this is a pretty high turnaround, especially for like a fantasy series. To ha get the book out in like, what, May? And to have the next book out by November, I think that's soon enough that like, I won't forget everything. <sighs> But yeah, all this is to say, loving it. Four is loving it too. So yeah, that is all I have to say at the moment. I've been nursing this coffee all day. I've already warmed it up once. I think cause there's no sugar in it. 
and that's why. But oh well, I'm gonna need this because I'm probably gonna be staying up tonight, and it's pretty much what I'm gonna do with the rest of my day. Is like, yes, I have. I just moved, by the way. I have so much to put away, but Zayden awaits me. I am now on page. 2.30, and if you've read the book, you'll obviously know more or less where I'm at. All I'm going to say is that Dane, well-intentioned, but he needs to like go home. Zayden, on the other hand, I think that's how you say his name, love that guy. I had to think for a second like how I wanted to explain my feelings for Zayden, but they are complicated, I'll give you that, because it, while I do like love him, I feel like to some extent, his character is just like, there's just something about him. I'm like, I, I just can't put my finger on it. I can't tell if the feeling I have is good or bad. Like, I don't think he's going to turn out to be like a traitor or anything. There's parts of him that are still growing on me, if that makes any sense at all. So if you go into this, don't expect for there to be any like insta lovey type stuff going on because some effort is being made. Let's just say that. And it will seem like it's insta lovey at first. I won't say why, but it will seem like it. But trust me, that's not what's going on. So if that's something you don't like and maybe you started reading the book and you thought that about Violet and a certain someone, I'm not gonna say which person, don't worry about it. Just don't. Keeping all of that in mind, my biggest dilemma that I'm facing right now is that I'm loving this book. I know I'm gonna be in a reading slump once I finish the book because I'm gonna try and find something that lives up to the hype and to the level of quality that this book has. And I'm not saying it will automatically be a bad book or any worse than this one. It's just that like, if you're an avid reader or maybe in general, you've just like finished a book you really liked and now you're kind of searching for something similar. I know I'm not gonna find anything close enough to this book to quench my sort of thirst for fantasy because I remember the exact same thing happening to me back when I first read Throne of Glass five or six years ago and I've been on a lifelong search since then to find something similar and I just haven't been. It's almost as if I've been on a weird like five to six year reading slump because of Throne of Glass. It's not that I haven't enjoyed books since then. Actually, my favorite book isn't even in the Throne of Glass series. My favorite book is Six of Crows. But my point still stands is that I feel like as readers, we fall into that trap of like, okay, we really like this one book and now we gotta search for the next thing that's kind of similar, but we know we're not going to find anything similar enough to like quench that thirst, as I said earlier. So I don't know if that made any sense at all. I, I know that was kind of rambly, but I think my point is sort of getting across just, I just have to learn that I'm never going to find anything exactly like what I was experiencing before. Yes, I can find another book with dragons. That's obviously fantasy great main character, all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's still not going to be like the same book. And I feel like when I'm in the midst of figuring that all out, I don't give the next book a fair chance. And then I always feel bad when I don't like it because I'm comparing it to the book. In this case, it would be Fourth Wing. Like I'm thinking about picking up Prior of the Orange Tree because I know there's dragons in that. But then I'm like, I know that Yes, the book is probably going to be great, but it's still not the same plot or the same character. So like, obviously I'm not going to like it. Anyway, I know I've been harping on this way too much. So I'm gonna get back to reading this book. I still can't get over how pretty it is. And I will talk to you guys later. It is June 21st. I believe I started this book almost exactly a week ago. And now I am on page 300 out of about 500 pages. So I have 200 more pages to go, which is crazy, but I am more than halfway through, as you can see. Really happy about that. I just got to a part where, man, the tension, the romantic and physical tension is just, ah, holy bejeebus. I just, this book, man. That is actually all I have to say right now, but I wanted to say something. My website is being rebuilt and I've been working with a web designer for the past couple of weeks. She's been really great, really understanding of everything. And so is my editor. So I'm really excited. I'm going to be doing some product design things for my shop, which will be launched at some point after the actual website goes live. So you can stay tuned for that as well, but let's get back to the reading vlog. Hello. <laughs> Hi.
hello. It is currently 18.05, I think. So about six o'clock at night, it is June 24th. So it's a Saturday. I am so close to finishing this book. I have less than a hundred pages. I'm currently on page 438 and I'm just about to start chapter 35, which if you've read the book, you would know what that means, what I just found out. And the emotional turmoil that I am going through right now is just like, it's crazy. I am on page 497. I have two pages left. The things that were revealed since I've last spoken to you just, we're gonna do this. <laughs> I just finished the book and um, I think you should go read it. Just initial reactions. I normally don't rate books on the internet, just a personal thing of mine. As someone who wants to be an author one day, I just don't really rate books. But when it comes to books that I absolutely love, I feel like it'd be a disservice to not rate it and to tell you guys how much I actually loved this book. Through and through, five stars. I have like my moments where I'm like, I originally thought, you know, this was going to be a simple read. Like that's what I heard at one point that for a beginner's fantasy, this is a good one to start with. And I can see why people would think that. This is definitely more tame compared to other books that I've, fantasy books that I've read in the past. But with that being said, it's a fantasy nonetheless, a high fantasy and there was some world building to understand. And there were moments where I was a little like, huh? And I had to read things once or twice, but that's bound to happen. It's never not happened with other five star reads, which is why I'm giving it that rating. The funniest part about all of this is I pre-ordered Fourth Wing on Amazon because I saw it advertised one day and I was like, this is a pretty book and it's obviously a fantasy. I looked at the synopsis, it looked really interesting. But again, I didn't really think much of it. I was like, oh, sure, why not? And I pre-ordered it. I put off reading it for a long time and then it started blowing up on TikTok somehow. And I'm assuming it's mainly just because of how uh, the book looks, that's at least what got everyone's attention in the first place. But obviously the quality of the story itself within those pages that are bound in this beautifulness is also what helped with getting this book to the popularity status that it has gotten to. And if it wasn't already obvious, this book was great. It's amazing. So please go read it. Go pick it up if you can. At this point in time, I looked on Amazon, sold out. So you might just have to settle for the ebook at this point in time. But with all of that being said, it's worth it to go and pick it up regardless of what format it's in. Um, I'm thinking about listening to it on audiobook at some point in the near future because that sounded really cool on audiobook as well from the parts that I previewed so we'll see about that. There isn't that much for me to say at this point in time because this is a spoiler free vlog so that is going to be all. Make sure to like, subscribe, and to do whatever the hell you want in life. Make sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified anytime that I post. Hope you have a great day and or night whenever you're watching this. Bye!